Lisa's going to be joining us next anyway, um, who took part in the course. A lot of what you're going to be talking about today is is off the back of that course. And I mean, Lisa just in the chat said how supportive an online community since the course they've sort of had together. So everyone's been really kind. And, and I think that was, um, I'm just going to invite Lisa on now. Um, and I think having that sort of regularity in this sort of digital sort of time was quite helpful for everyone, sort of um, having that kind of period there. Uh, so yeah, Amanda is just asking here. So um, we know Amanda's a singer and, and had, had quite obviously not been able to sort of perform and that sort of thing. So she's just said, during the pandemic, many have worried about their future, especially if you work in the performing arts. So, I mean, do you have any advice kind of moving out of the pan pandemic mindset and how to apply that into something like performance? And it's quite different to the sort of the work that you um, you do. But, I mean, you're also a DJ, aren't you, Justin? So the, that, that kind of performance <laughs> yeah. sort of level does impact it as, as well. I mean, it, I, I suppose it helps to think um, if you can, I think slightly left of centre to where you are. It's like, you know, for me, like you say, I'm, I also work, um, I mean, I'm hugely passionate about music, but I didn't really have an outlet for it. But as soon as I started working for the restaurants, I was like, ah, ah DJ here. And But it's like, you know, is there, are there opportunities um, that can, I mean, it's so difficult for performing artists at the moment, and it is going to be a slow journey back, I think. But there may be other ways of doing this. I mean, I just think like outdoor performances, obviously. In the yeah, but place. I also think more than that, Amanda, I think, you know, it's sort of a little bit of the interview sort of scenarios. Like, why don't you do Instagram lives if you feel comfortable doing those, but like with other performers that you may be trained with, but also utilizing this kind of in between time where you can't perform and things aren't going back to normal to really learn and like learn from others and then but sharing it with everyone else so that people think well this Amanda lady she's getting to know some interesting mm -hmm. people she's got some interesting conversations going on and I think as well you know it's, it does give you a bit of a competitive edge <laughs> having those things you know um I know some of the yeah. I don't know if this kind of works but some of the bands that I like have been doing things like um Friday night gigs on YouTube but from their living room but it's so nice mm. like I feel much more connected with them in that in the way that you know they're just like well we can't play at the moment so we'll just play for you on a Friday night and it's like wow I'm watching low in their living room whoa this is so nice mm. do you know what I mean and you feel really a part of it so it's like can you create there are other opportunities to be had but it's just finding the thing that works for you I suppose mm. and hopefully there's a you know we're on the way out you know, towards being able to do things again anyway. Mm. Yeah, and, and I mean, that that had been a sort of large part of um, what you took took on board from the course, wasn't it, Lisa? Just that, that whole thing about, well, I, I can't do what I want to do at the moment, so um, this is an opportunity just to, to do it. <laughs> So that, this is what I was going to talk about. So you've just cut out half my half my talk now. Oh, oh no, sorry. <laughs> but no, it was an absolute catalyst. I think I started off with a bit of a chip on my shoulder, and it was like, oh well, Sachi's not going to come into my studio, and I haven't got a. I didn't go to St Martin's, and then I kind of thought, oh, well, get over it. What have I got, and what can I work with? And I worked with that, and it's been phenomenal. It's been an amazing experience. Oh, so yeah. yeah, but but I'll I'll cut my short talk then, shall I? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't no. do. <laughs> uh, but I, I just thought it'd be good to just bring you on just beforehand, anyway, Lisa. But um, we've just got one more question here from Lindsay. So, um, do you have any advice on how to prioritize storms of creative ideas to come up with a strong focus? I have that. I have the the too many ideas uh, problem. Mm -hmm. And ideas that run like way beyond things that I can even do. Like, yeah, I, I whole ideas for making films that really aren't going to happen. Um, well, they might. Uh, they might, but you know, it, I do understand that. And I think what you've got to do, in a way, is is build step by step. So it might be saying um, if if there's a lot of ideas, like what what's practical and reasonable within my realm at this point. It's a bit like when I started with the restaurant and quite quickly I, I've got all sorts of ideas about whole conceptual, you know, interiors. But it started with a few mirrors on the wall and slowly has developed. So I think it's like what what was what 
if you can stand back enough to say, what's a sensible thing to do now mm. that I can build on and start to bring other ideas in? It's almost like you need to put them into some kind of order mm. and start from a point that's doable uh, in, in a really pragmatic sense. Like, you know, where can I start? And, you know, if some of these ideas are really quite ambitious. Like, well, maybe I can get to there, but through several steps. I mean, that's one thing that, um, I mean, I make, I'm make i a big list maker. Mm. And then, you know, you go back the next day and look at the list and you think, well, films one to four aren't going to happen yet, are they? So maybe I'll start with um, something really quite small, like a small pan across an installation and the video starts. Yeah, just having a book or note, noting them down, but also I think having um, kind of rules as well or even how you, you know, maybe there are five ideas that you can do. So just, but you sort of trying to, basically schedule your week so Monday you're doing this job Tuesday or you do one week on one thing and so if you actually but when you actually just put those parameters of an actual day and time it can help kind of uh, rain like kind of raining is not the right word but sort of um, help um, shape your week you know uh, and help you kind of focus in on what on one thing on one day rather than everything kind of being like, well, I could do this, that, and the other, and just like sitting down and being like, well, you know, and this goes with just not just ideas, but just life in general, <laughs> and like yeah. having to juggle things, and like, well, Sunday is a studio day, I'm going to do drawings on this day, and then on Monday I'm going to try out that new thing with like clay or whatever it is, you know, and just trying to write down a structure for yourself, and then going wild within that structure. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting because... Um just going back to something that Lisa said, I think, you know, when we were doing the course and it can look a little bit like, oh, well, these two have done so many things, but, you, you know, those things were all done very much one at a time over very many years. Do you sort of mean? So it's like they all started in one place mm. and then very slowly ended up somewhere else. It's always thinking about, okay, so I don't have to do everything on that list this week. Mm. Um, let's give myself some time. So it's also like, you know, first things first. I think that's exactly what I got from your course, which was um, don't just sit around waiting to be discovered and go and do something for yourself. And it was clear that you'd, you'd done that. Although, you know, I, I see you as someone who had a, a really good education and a really fancy college and, and, and got to meet all these amazing people. But when I get beyond that, I actually see that you work for that and you've done it incrementally, step by step until you got there. Mm. So Strangely, even that stuff, like you say, you know, I went. I did graphic design at St Martin's mm. when it was yeah. trendy to do that. They didn't teach us anything. You know. What oh, they, I know. They it just room. sounds good. <laughs> that was great, but they just put us in a room together, and they 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 put good people in a room together. But really, at, at the time, I thought they taught us nothing. No, I remember you saying this on the course. Yeah. <laughs> jobs for years, and actually now people have become. They do amazing things, but at the time we thought, what a bunch of losers! Like we didn't. Yeah. We just didn't do anything. You know, you know, it, it was really tricky, and it people think, oh, well, you did that. You should be top designer in a agency <laughs> or something. But in a funny way, it was more they were expecting us to do that whole social thing before we were quite ready for it. You know, like get together and make our own products yeah. and just be independent. That's they were trying to force you to do it for yourself by not really giving you anything. Mm. Um, you did it you looked for places where you could exhibit and you set up exhibitions and you started curating and it all you know it's sort of if you look at where you are you started there and you ticked off the boxes until you got there really didn't yeah. you and that's what I took away from the course was that there's no earthly point in me sitting around waiting for Sachi to walk through my door because that's not going to happen yeah and it's just not so let's do what I can do yeah, yeah but it's also nurturing you in so many yeah. ways that when you don't do your projects and you're waiting around and all that kind of go oh actually this is really makes me feel better this makes me feel connected it makes me feel you know interested and intellectually challenged that you know, I'm not just in my own work as well you know and, um and all those wonderful conversations that I'm sure you've been having with all the people that have shown in the tiny cat gallery mm -hmm. um which yeah it's amazing yeah <laughs> well we should let you get on with your talk now <laughs> That's probably a really nice place to sort of finish there. So thank you, um, yeah, thank you both um, f for all of that and 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 all that you'll be sharing sort of through the course and things as well. Um, 
And so, um, yeah, the, the pre-record that Rosalind has done will be sort of sharing and things everybody that's sort of signed up today. Um, and so if um, we can ask you both to leave the stage and then we can give um, Lisa some room to um, share her screen and things. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Have a great day. And, and um, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.